sounds like he was trying to keep Matt Kenseth on the racetrack so that their plan for Matt as a as a protege yes. and, a, and, a, and a future for Roush would. I, you know, would I, I think they're trying to get through. Matt experience so yeah. they can move him up to the Cup Series and and uh, you know we were we were we were better than having having them to have a build a whole team to make yeah. it work. So you drove Chevrolets in '98 '99. Yep. Um, how did you manage that? For Matt, who's signed with Roush, how, was that tricky at all? It wasn't tricky because it was just a, a test deal, and 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 Mark was kind of Mark Martin was pushing it to make it all happen. Yeah. So Roush wasn't really, you know, hardlining us. They were just glad we were doing it. Yeah. How much support did y'all get from Roush in '98, '99 in terms of no engineering support, nothing, no, nothing like that, nothing, nothing. That was all on our own. Yeah. So you when y'all went, to, I remember going to, I remember where your shop was. Uh, and but so you, Roush, other than trying to assist in partnerships and so forth, physically had nothing to do with the team. That's correct. Right. Yep. The riser riser enterprise was on its own. How how do you so? What's fascinating to me, man, is that y'all f- run good. <laughs> I mean, y'all you know you had two top fives in '97 with Matt, but in '98 '99 you win seven races. Uh, 17 and 14 top fives. What was the, what was the thing that got y'all to that point to where your cars got so good? You, you know, what was it? Ability to be able to, you know, hire more people. Heart, what, heart, heart. You got it. I know, but I think, you got to build. You got you get the shock deal at that time. You know, the shock technology at that time was was critical. You, you know who did the shocks? Who? Matt. <laughs> yeah, I believe I remember that. Yes, because I he, I was doing the shocks and I had one in my hand one day and I was I was working. He was talk. I mean, that's what he did. He came in and talked to talked to me and and would would bother me to the point where I wouldn't remember something. And I I I tried to uh, pressurize one and I blew the top off it and the oil was all over the roof and and he was laughing. Yeah. He thought it was so funny. I said, "Screw it, you you start doing the shocks, then." Yeah, I don't have time for all this. Yeah, you yeah, know. He did. So who was who was who was navigating you know what springs you're going to run and trying to stay on top of spring technology because there, <laughs> there was all kinds of crazy shit going on with springs you yeah. had to have this spring then they, then this company I, started making springs and it was our it was just our team yeah i mean we i didn't really have any outside help i mean it was from wisconsin it did, wasn't, wasn't like i had a lot of connections i yeah. just uh it was just hard work i mean we just we just worked our way through it and did the best we could with what we had yeah mm. Pretty impressive. It is impressive. Um, once the operation gets absorbed by Roush, how does that happen? What's that process? Well, um, what what happened was in 2000, they wanted to go racing cup, and DeWalt wanted to go racing cup. My dad wanted to go racing cup, <laughs> <laughs> but but we we were we were, I had to have a discussion with him and tell him, Dad, we were so fortunate to where we are here and then and then visine came along you stayed with chevrolet yes the the riser enterprise car got its own sponsorship and and matt stayed with the team and just kept kept running yeah matt and ran it, a lot of races yes and then even uh, as a rookie I mean, in cup he still ran yes. a bunch of xfinity races yeah he he wanted to drive that bush car all the time yeah anytime we had it he wanted to drive it and uh then then uh roush was push uh, i shouldn't say roush mark martin was pushing for us to to come over so dewalt and roush got together and they put the put the deal together and then mark pushed for us to for matt to come over there along with me so yeah. mark's the one who came and said robbie would you would you be interested and i was i was uh you know i obviously was interested i so wanted you, to be a part of it so who's going to manage your bush team so what we did was we we uh, at that time we hired Gary Coswell to oversee the Bush team and kept Russ and the and and that group together, mm-hmm. and then Dad was Dad was going to help oversee the oversee the Bush program at that time, and I could go off and yeah. and do what I needed to do over by Roush, and then they would just use me when I when I when I was needed. It looked like uh, it looked like in two thousand, um, your Bush program or at some point your Bush program was going to start developing new talent. Uh, you hired uh, Clay Rogers, who I know really well. Jason Schuler, I don't really remember him. Jason Schuler was from Wisconsin. Okay. He, he was a, kind of a Matt protege in a way. So what, what was that the intention? It was like, hey, man, we're gonna, we got an opportunity with these guys. We're going to start trying some young guys out. Um, but, but then that was really short-lived. Um, what was the process there? It was, it was short-lived because of sponsorship. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we took Matt out, then the sponsorship uh, was hard to sell with the young guys. Yeah. And they, they were willing to do it when Matt would run more races 
and we could we could bring in the younger guys. And I w our hope was that they would run well enough to to attract something else. But at that time, we weren't able to put that together. Yeah. And so, what was the um, what was the future of the Bush team from that point on? Uh, I think it ran to 2003. Yeah. And then uh, then Jack wanted to purchase it, so it kind of got away, you know, so it got out of out of our hands. Yeah, yeah you're you're winning a cup championship at this point. You're, you're head on focused 100% on Yeah, he wanted move. us to be focused on what he was doing and he needed some help up in Mooresville, so he was he was interested in my dad coming over and giving him a hand there. So he bought your, bought your whole team? So so he purchased a lot of the stuff and then we sold some some off separately and then dad went over to help him with what they had going on in Mooresville. Did you sell the shop? No, I have that today. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I still I have two buildings on it now, and and the tri Triton Trailers is on one side. I rent out a front uh, part, and then I have my son who's got his uh, landscape business running out of the out of the old fab shop. Really? Yeah. Okay. Where is it? It's in Denver. What's okay. the What's the landscape business? Uh he's he's uh, he's 21 years old. He's got a a lawn care business. So he started out driving around and cutting the neighbor's yards, and he's growing it to a. To, he's got basically three crews now, and they've got three trucks that run out, and and uh, they they do ma lawn maintenance. Really? Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Do you need his number? <laughs> I'm going to write it down. <laughs> yeah. um, I got a lot of work. You um, got a lot of yard. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't mowing it. I ain't kidding. Yeah, you ain't kidding about it. So, um, all right, so – that at some point, you pretty much are like, hey, man, that, that part of my life is now in the rearview mirror. I'm no longer an Xfinity Series owner, 100% a crew chief in the Cup Series. Um, let's talk about that championship year. You know, that was 2003. Y'all win the Rookie of the Year. You, uh, you're having great success right out of the gate. Um, are you – I mean, I, I, don't, I, I was living this – with y'all, yeah. you know, but so I, I don't know that you're all that surprised to be honest with you. I just remember watching y'all and, you know, with the success you had in the Xfinity series and the wins. And then, uh, it seemed like when you won the championship, it wasn't, it wasn't an upset by that point. You know, Cause y'all had been the upset team. That was your story winning in Rockingham in 98, right. right? Your identity was now completely changed once you got into the cup series. Um, you felt I could see in your face. This is what we're supposed to do. This is what, this well, is what we're we're Roush racing now. This is this si this success and this this is what we expect. The goal was to stand on the stage at the Waldorf. I saw you know Richard Petty, Kale Yarbrough, your dad. I mean it, that that's what you grew up watching, mm -hmm. you know. And I wanted the I wanted to experience that, you know. And uh, I think Matt and myself are. are you know, we were a good team that way because he wanted to win races and I wanted to win a championship. And I think in 2002 we won we won quite a few races, but we didn't we weren't able to get up in the points because we weren't consistent. So in in uh, in 03 it was about being consistent. It was about you know you know not taking chances and and making smart decisions and and uh, you know there were some races we could have probably won if we would have stayed out on field or we would have did this or did that. Well, I never I didn't do that. I I you know the the, the way the championship was set up was a guy with the most points wins. So that was the goal and to get the most points. That's what we were trying to do and that's the way we raced all year. Yeah. But back up. Do we we do I remember this right? Was your first win with Matt and Cup the 600? Yes, in 2000. In 2000. That was a big deal, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, like well, Dale, Dale had won at Texas, so we had to come back and win a race. <laughs> That's what I remember. This route, both of these guys, that you know, their, their careers are sort of you know, yeah. parallel with each other from the I Xfinity remember. Series. And then such a big deal made about that rookie season for him. Yeah. And then here comes Matt winning the 600. Which was a huge deal. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. He re Matt reminded me that he won Texas right away. Oh, well, yo, he won Texas. So we, we, we're going to have to do something here. We, yeah, yeah, were, just hang tight. we were very competitive. <laughs> and me and Matt talked a lot, and, you know, weekly almost, especially through 98, 99. Um, and we shared a lot of, uh, you know, even in our rookie year, Matt would come to me and go, hey, they're asking me to do this. Is, are you doing that? You know, talking about, you know, NASCAR and yeah. other, other off-track requests and stuff like that and getting motorhomes, and we'd go to each other's houses and hang out and party. And uh, we went to uh, – I won the All-Star all race the week before, 
And, uh, and then we're running that 600 and we were running really good. Y'all were running good. Dad was running all right. And they had a rain delay, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was a rain delay. You're and, right. Yep. Yeah, and I get out of my car and I go over and sit next to Dad. And I think I'm, I led some laps. I'm up front. And I'm like, yeah, man, what you think about this that you're seeing from this eight car, man? What about it, old timer? You know, we won last week. I'm really feeling good about myself. And we restarted that race. And I'm like, man, I might win the freaking 600 tonight. And we ended up running fourth. And Matt smoked us after the rain delay. <laughs> I was like, holy sh. You know what I did the rain delay? I went and got I went and got everybody's sandwich and stuff because the race is so damn long. You damn know, right. I, everybody was hungry, so yeah. I went and had sandwiches and all that brought down, and and everybody had a lunch. And I said, okay, now, we're, now it's time to get back to racing here. Yeah, yeah. that <laughs> was a long night. <laughs> um, but I remember I don't I mean I can't say what it was like on y'all's side, but I do remember y'all's success was a good a good influence and driving force for Tony Senior, myself, Tony Junior. We all got along really well yeah um but our successes i think pushed each other uh, because we both you know we braced each other for championships in the xfinity series we raced each other for rookie of the year title and then we we're gonna you know there's a race to who's gonna be the first to win a championship y'all actually did it i never did it um we did skip all the way past the one damn time we that we actually only on track accident we ever really had was at dover when i wrecked us both um but otherwise i mean we just we just always were like one up in each other, if you will. It was a really great relationship. I mean, it was it was competitive, but it was a ton of sportsmanship, yeah. you know, and 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 respect. Even uh, at Dover, That's even a, at Dover, I, I mean, busted my. Well, they knew I busted my. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we 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 had some laughs over that, but uh, you, you know, and and uh, Tony Senior, I I I told the story, but uh, you know, I think the 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 real relationship between myself and Tony Stewart. Our Tony uh, Senior was when uh, when that Dover crash was, and and we fixed the cars, and and uh, we we're getting ready to go home, and and we walked. I walked back to the truck, and Tony was standing there, and he brought me to the front of the trailer, and uh, we had we drank a beer together. He had two beers sitting there, and says, "Let's just let's just have a beer and have a laugh." He said, "He said I'm sorry this happened," and I I didn't know you know at the time I didn't know who wrecked who. I was just fixing cars and trying to get <laughs> trying to get the whatever points we could get out of the day, you know, and. Uh, uh, what an amazing moment! Those yeah. guys were, you know, for all the years that we raced together, I, I, I will say that I had a lot of fun racing my late model in ninety in the nineties. I had a really, really good time racing the Bush Series in ninety eight and ninety nine uh, with with your group, yeah. you know, with your team and our team. And and even when we went cup racing, we got separated a little bit because of the way they set up the garage and the points were, but. It there it was always it was always fun it was always um, mutual respect it was all you know there was never a bad word it no. was always it was always a laugh you yeah. know and I still remember your dad coming up and uh, coming up in our trailer all the time and getting my mom's cookies and, and uh, <laughs> you, you know my mom you know Dale's up here taking my cookies you gotta quit taking my cookies here I I gotta make more cookies you know and yeah. it, it was just a, it was a really fun time I mean Tony Senior we had we had so many laughs and and Tony would lose his mind and Dale would tell you that tony oh, yeah. would lose his mind i watched him throw scales one day in the trailer and i walked out over 15 minutes we later. called him rosy because he'd turn red he'd get so mad he'd oh, turn red he, <laughs> he took those scales and sailed them in that trailer because they were them wireless things and they never worked and he took and threw them in the truck and i walked over about 15 minutes later and he i said tony are you all right yeah i'm all right these damn guys around here they think they works and nothing works <laughs> <laughs> i've never even asked you this and it, i've forgotten about it but now it occurs to me i gotta ask dale wasn't there like this magazine article where K katie kenseth threw shade at you called you like silver spoon or something like that uh -huh. i i think no like in the esp in the magazine like she was like mad at you for some reason well, you don't remember that? no i don't know the article you're talking about but um <clears throat> i made a mistake one time I did not know. Apparently, I did not know what the definition of homely means. Oh Lord! And so I thought that homely meant um, a very natural looking, uh, like so. I was trying beautiful without having needed makeup. Yes, or something. like a like a that, but also like man, you like the like a like a very grounded, um, 
you know, I don't know what I was trying to go for, man. Whoops. You yeah. called her homely? I told Matt that. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> we were at Talladega, and I said, and Matt and her were getting really serious. And we taught, we, we, my, Matt would share with me what was going on in his personal life, and I would share with him what was going on in mine. And he's like, I was like, oh, man, you know, you're getting, he really liked her. They, he was telling me how excited he was. How they were, how you, I remember him coming and telling me about the first time they got to hang out and he went home for something, a wedding or something. Yeah. And uh, he's so excited. And I, and I finally get to meet her and hang out with her. And I think by this point, they were maybe even married. And I was like, I was telling him, I was like, man, you've got yourself a great match. You and her, you and her fit really well. She's so homely. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, man, she's, she's cool. Oh, like, now you hurt his feelings. Well, I didn't know what the hell I was saying. And she, he runs help Bill. He, he knew I screwed up, and he runs and tells her. And now she don't think it's funny. She no. don't think that the little, the, you know, the misspoke, mis, she, she knew I misspoke, but she didn't think it was very funny at all. She was mm. pissed. Um, <laughs> and she, and I profusely apologized because I didn't even know the definition of the word I was using, but I do know now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she yeah. don't take no bullshit. And she did get you back in an article. I'll, I'll dig it yeah, out. Oh, well, let's not do that. Let's just let I'm it all. Oh, let's I'm let's doing it. Years ago, man. Let's <laughs> let it go. All right, keep, all right. We're back on the Robbie story yeah. here. I just needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, the, 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 you, you know, the I stood up at his wedding. No. Yeah. I stood Are you up kidding me? You spoke uh, up yeah, as much as when it, they asked if for anybody, anybody has a problem. If anybody has a problem, speak now. Forever hold your peace. You you spoke up. No. Okay. I stood up in his wedding, you know, like one of the brides or one of the groomsmen. Oh, Jesus. Yes. You were a groomsman. I was a groomsman. That's, that's a little, not stand up. You didn't that give is, us that impression out yeah. of the gate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, well, I guess maybe yeah. that's the difference between Southern and Northern. Yeah. But up north, you, you stand you up were, in a wedding. You were a groomsman. He invited you to be in his wedding. Yeah. yeah. You believe that? I do. Y'all were freaking tight. <laughs> I think he knew that you were that, you know, you were such an important part of his success on the track and his, you know, keeping him. Grounded and all He was that. my friend. Y'all were close. And you didn't call his wife homely. That's I didn't call his wife homely. No. <laughs> Katie was Look, great. Man. Katie's a really great person. I really she is. Had a lot of fun with her. She's amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. I've, I've made my share of mistakes. <laughs> we all, Don't we never. All, we all have. I will say this. It was a lesson learned. Never to say a word that you're not too sure about the meaning. <laughs> right. Uh, just right. keep that in your pocket. So um, winning the championship. You know, you've realized this dream. Um, and... The one thing that I think is interesting is you clinched the championship um, in the last, you know, the the second to last race at Rockingham in classic style. That man, when Dad would win the championships a race or two early, that was a real f you minute a moment. You know, like your middle finger to the rest of the series. Like y'all couldn't even, you know, we we're a race ahead of y'all. We don't even have to go to the last one. <laughs> that was a real bad thing to do. Um, but you, you know. NASCAR goes and changes the points uh, championship and ha- you know brings in this playoff format. Everybody knows that you guys influenced that, and I wonder if you f- does that is that like um, a bragging point for you personally? You wouldn't probably ever mention it publicly, but among friends, like is you know you ran you ran the championship system so well that you had you forced NASCAR to have to go change it. I don't think that ever crossed my mind really? uh, for that, that part, no. I think, uh, you know, I grew up uh, we grew up winning races and championships by the guy winning the most points, and I think that that was how you won them. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know any other way. It's my favorite way to win them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't know any other way to, to do that. Uh, that's how you did it in Wisconsin. You raced from race one to, to, to the end, and yeah. you were the champion if you had the most points, and uh, that's the way we did it here. I mean, I, I understand where they want it to go. I mean, they want it to manufacture more excitement and do all these things. But uh, sometimes when you try to manufacture something, you're, you're, you're depleting another thing. You know, and I think, uh, you know, if I look back at racing traditionally uh, and, and be, you know, part of, part of the sport, that was, that was something uh, that, that was you grew up seeing, you yeah. know, and, and – the big thing was, you know, at the end of the year, you always saw everybody go to New York, and you wanted to be a part of going to New York, you know, to stand on, you know, to stand by your championship car down on Times Square and go to the White House and do yeah. all these things. It, I never, ever in my in my 
process uh, throughout this would thought that all this would happen. Yeah. You know, it was just you had, you had, you're looking out the windshield all the time, trying to get this, trying to get that, do this, do that. You know, and uh, I, I never really thought about the the chase. I thought about winning the championship, and I guess I guess the thing that winning the championship really didn't set right with me is. When we won the championship, the team wasn't even in the same room. I remember you know, that. What? And, and yeah, the the team went, was off in a different room. And I remember going to see my mom and dad, and they were in the back of this room watching it on TV. In the in the Waldorf. Yeah, in the Waldorf, and they were I, in a different ballroom. It it just changed something in me. I don't know what that did to me that day, but it did something because to win a championship. It requires everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's a village to win. You know, I mean, it takes it takes a full team and all the other people on the outside that are helping you yeah. to get there to do this and and to be a part of this and to have that separated. Yeah, really took a a lot of um, you know air out of my out of my I system. I guess it, it wasn't all always this, like that, was it? No, it just, I mean, I remember when Dad won the championships in the nineties and 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 maybe I think the first one I went to was in the early nineties. They were in the ba- balcony. That's right, hooting and hollering. Yeah, hollering from yeah, the balcony. But, but they only let them go up in the balcony for like 10 minutes. Is really? Right? Yeah, they, they, yeah, and there was even, you know, I guess, you know, our guys had too many people, and they even were going to take some people and push them out of the balcony. And, and Jeff Vandermoss, the car chief, he said, no, we either all go or we don't go. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying that they, they were going to let your guys go up there for 10 minutes. Yes. But, yeah, you're saying – Yeah, yeah we, I always remembered watching those things on TV and the, and the they teams were – were, You yeah. could hear them. Yeah. yeah, they were definitely – yeah, I can imagine. Only, only during your speeches, though. Yeah, only during the, the championship okay. uh, drive. They let them in there. I yeah, they you. let them in there. Otherwise, they they weren't in there. And I, and it really, it really hurt my feelings when I, yeah. my mom and dad weren't even in the room. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, that's all fair. this everything you'd worked for and this dream you're realizing and yeah. had something like that that would have been probably one of the most important things about the whole process. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below and don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mode Media content.